27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. On another time, Jesus said in Mark 4 and 40, he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? This was after he calmed the storm. And in 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly, and who correctly, correctly handles the word of truth. And 1 Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We're talking about readiness today. Jesus was ready to bless people and heal people and enlighten people. And the only time he didn't answer was when they were accusing him. He answered not a word, but he was ready to do that. Be ready. We're talking about readiness today. Romans 13, 11 to 12 says this, And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. In this verse, we're told when to awake. When to awake. It says the hour has already come. So that means now. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Continuing slumber is to ignore the warnings in Scripture. Slumber. And we do that. Get distracted and slumber. The sleep of carnal security is a rest that is based on false security. You know, the culture we live in stresses the importance of security. We have to have enough investments to retire. We have to have savings to get us by in a dry time. Being satisfied in one's state, one's income, one's position is a slumber spiritually, if that's what you have your heart fastened on. I mean, we're supposed to have ring doorbells to catch thieves that are stealing stuff, and we're, you know, some of us carry guns. Um, but to be satisfied in that security is a slumber. Being satisfied. We are to awake, not rest in our security, not rest in our comfort zone. When everything is reset, that is carnal security. Carnal security. If we're comforted because everything is the same as we're used to. It's carnal security. We were in that church, you know, yesterday. And we grew up in that type of a church. And they're still doing exactly the same thing. Everybody comes in there, does the same thing. I'm not going to tell you what they do because I'm not going to stand up here and criticize another church. But it's amazing how many, I don't know how many years that's been, they've been doing exactly the same thing. And they all answer in unison with the same words. And you could do that half asleep. You could do that half asleep. Carnal security. That's the, that's, I call it, I call it uh, comfort zone-itis. But then it says, put on the armor of light, John, John 1, 4. It says, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The armor of light is no ordinary light. And it's no, and it's no ordinary armor. The holy light of God 
reflected to us in Jesus himself is the light that we are to put on in that scripture. Armor is the defense of an attack of an enemy. We have an enemy. He's been flexing his muscles around here. But he doesn't win. Our enemy is, is more sinister, more dangerous, more sneaky than any physical hazard, obstacle, or threat that we can encounter. We're to be ready. 1 Peter 5 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Someone who isn't being alert, who isn't being ready. The attacks will come. You need to be ready. Amen. Amen. The God of this world hates you. The God of this world, Satan himself, hates you and all of his demons and I think there are millions of them I really do the threat is very real we raise a defense against the physical threats that we see the physical things that we see we raise it we raise a defense it's it's raining we shut the windows put up an umbrella we get flu shots we get pneumonia shots and now COVID shots all defense, all readiness. The military and the police train to be ready to handle a threat. Some of us are armed because there might be a threat. We do all the defensive things against, uh, all the defensive things, stay awake, stay sober, trying to be ready. Driving a car, you must be alert always you must be ready our God wants us to be ready vigilant prepared we're responsible to take care um, of our families of our church of our lives the trappings of life need looking after you have to sew a button on your shirt <laughs> You have to go to the store when everything's running out and lay in a supply of certain things. You have, I mean, that's things you have to do. The trappings of life. The things that we accumulate need, be, need to be taken care of. You have to keep an eye on your bank account. We got scammed. We got, do they call it scammed? Yeah. A couple hundred bucks worth of things we never ordered. ordered and uh, they don't know, they put a claim in. As soon as I saw that, I went right to the bank. They said, well, this is fraud. And they put a claim in. And there was a whole bunch of things that they that they charged uh, in the, at the Apple store in Cupertino, California. All the same, all the same amount. A whole bunch of them, all the same amount. They were in a good time until the bank stopped it. It was on, it was on Carol's debit card. So you got to be... <laughs> You gotta be ready. I, I look at the. I look at that every day, sometimes twice, just to make sure what's going on, what the balance is. You need look to look to look after the things that you accumulate. But there's a more pressing need for readiness, a more pressing need for vigilance. The enemy has a design on you. Whatever, whatever he can do, to destroy to destroy the work of God in you. Or the work of God that you might do for God. He tries to destroy, to distract. He tries to derail all those efforts. All of it. We have to be about the Father's business. Jesus charged us so in the Great Commission. We have battles to fight. You don't get saved and then it's all peace. You have battles to fight. You can hide from them, run away from them. But we have victories to win. We've had victories around here. With God's help and for His honor, we win those victories. But we have to be ready for His return. Ready. Because He's coming back. And what's He going to find when He comes? Do you stay ready? Are you 
prepared? Were you able to accomplish what he wanted you to do? Luke 12, 35 to 40 says this, Be dressed, ready for service. Keep your lamps burning. See, we are to get ready and stay in readiness for his returning. He's coming back. Yes. Without a brightly burning lamp, we can't see the work in the darkness in the night. And sometimes you have to do your work against darkness. I'm talking about dark spirits that are in people. Sometimes we have to do our work in that darkness. But we have his light. We carry the light into that darkness. Meanwhile, while we wait, our service is to carry the gospel. What we carry is crucial. Without the gospel, the good news, no one will know how to be saved. Romans 10, 13 and 15 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We cannot accomplish the service that is our responsibility without being in readiness. Be ready. There's five readies that come to my mind. And they don't have to be in this order, but the first one I have here is ready to pray. Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Spoken by our Lord on the night he was betrayed. His disciples fell asleep. He said, watch and pray. They fell asleep. The child of God has to have a prayer life. The distractions of the world lull us and pull us away from our prayer life. In addition to the regular prayer time or prayer times that you might have, we need to be in the habit of praying every time a need comes to our attention. So I firmly believe that we prayed. Ruthie, John, Bob, and Susan out of the hospital. We were ready to pray. But when the need comes by a telephone call or by the one call, I pray right away. I keep that because I'm going to pray in my regular prayer times. But... Um, I pray for those right away because I'm a very absent-minded, forgetful preacher. And if I don't pray, and if she's in the room, we pray together. We pray for them right when we get those needs because I'll forget. The flesh is weak. <laughs> Watch and pray. We've been ready to pray in this church, especially during these hard times we're in. We're ready to pray. Second one is ready to hear from God. Prayer is communication, and our communication with God should be two-way communication. It's not just like we're on a loudspeaker and we rattle off a bunch of stuff to God and then we go home. Would you have a conversation with somebody? It would be rude for you not to have a, to hear a response with them. But we do that with God. We do. We have a list. And when we're done mentioning that list, then we close off the communication. Well, we should listen for the still, small voice that speaks to us in our spirit. Sometimes there's an audible voice, but usually it's a still, small voice speaks in your spirit and leads you to do things he wants you to do. He might have some marching orders for you. Or he might just say, watch out when you're driving today. But we need to listen to hear. And then be ready to go and do whatever he's speaking. The third one I have is ready to serve. This is a matter of attitude. Moses 
didn't want to serve. <laughs> he was cold at the burning bush. He didn't think he could. He was making excuses. I'm, I don't speak well. I can't do this. I'm just a shepherd. And God had to convince him at the burning bush that he would be able to do what God wanted him to do because God would be with him. We can't do anything. We might have great ideas about what we should do for God, but without God being with us, it's not going to work. So God convinced him. And Moses, he wasn't ready at first. And I can remember not being ready at first, being called into the ministry. I resisted that. I wasn't ready. But God had to overcome my lack of being ready. That was an awesome moment. Every believer needs to be ready to serve. That doesn't mean you have to be ready to be a minister and go on a foreign mission field. That means you might be ready to speak to somebody in the store or a neighbor or like that lady I ran into yesterday. You know, we're, we're not all called to be pastors. And by the way, being a pastor doesn't necessarily mean being a great preacher. Because I, I don't call myself a great preacher. But what Scotty was talking about was keeping track of all the people and how they were doing and having a heart for them and praying for them. That's being a pastor. And I hope that I can live up to that. But we all have opportunities to minister. We're all ministers. Opportunities. Is there anyone here who doesn't know someone that's hurting? No. We all know somebody that's hurting. Serving God means to bring encouragement, sharing a good word, being a blessing, and carrying the gospel. Susan needs encouragement. She doesn't want to talk to anybody. But I, I'm going to try to think of a way to overcome that. You know, if I call you, you put it on speaker, and she doesn't have to reply, and I just said, I'll give her some, would that, would she do that? Would she listen? Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if she just said, you know, I don't know what's going on. Maybe, maybe in a day or two, maybe we'll do yeah. that. I'll just, I'll call you. I'll call, I have her phone number because I called her in the hospital. Yeah. And she did talk to me. Yeah. But then I found out from you that she wasn't very interactive and didn't want to be. So I left her alone. Yeah. But, um. I'm burdened to do that. I got to do that. I'm listening. I'm ready. I just have to know when and how and what to share. But I'm going to do it. Because I pastor her as well as you. She doesn't have a church. She's in our hearts at this church. Number four, ready to learn. It's impossible to share something that you don't know. <laughs> Uh, the media shares stuff all the time, and they're totally, totally, totally wrong. <laughs> I think they know better, but they're lying. And so do some of the people in Washington, D.C. They just have ideas, but they're not, they don't know what they're talking about. You can't effectively share knowledge about something that you don't know, that you haven't studied, that you haven't checked out. 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. The word of truth is this, and you can't correctly handle it unless you know what's in it. You can't know what's in it unless you read it. Don't take my word for it. And not only that, but you have to study it. To know the word requires more than just reading. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Um, Dwight Moody said, Merely reading the Bible is no use at all without we study it thoroughly and hunt it through, as it were, for some great truth. The Bible is my all-sufficient rule for faith and for practice. The whole Bible contains the expressed word of will, will of God. 
from the bad news of the fall of man to the good news about the Messiah to the coming kingdom it's all in there it's all in here and when I read it and I don't understand a certain thing I put a little question mark on the side and then when I get a few minutes I go and look up some commentaries and try to get you know try to get a better understanding of that scripture so if you want to know it, you have to learn it. If you want to learn it, you have to study it. If you want to study it, you have to be ready to learn. Number five, ready to speak. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. So readiness to speak. Our speaking comes from the truth that's in our hearts. You have experienced it. Therefore, you can speak of it. That's called a testimony. Our speaking comes from having studied the word so that you know what you're talking about. Our speaking comes from the motivation that the power of our words in sharing the gospel will bring blessings like we have received. Our speaking the words of truth brings victory where there is defeat and hope where there is despair. And there is a lot of despair around. Our speaking carries the brilliant light of the gospel into dark places. Our speaking the word wrestles the soul that the enemy has control of away from him and we have seen many as a matter of fact we are all we are all examples of that we really are our speaking brings newness of life to those who will hear the gospel and accept Jesus as Lord some of them refuse to believe that's tragic our speaking makes us profitable servants for the Lord. Continuing in Luke chapter 12, go to verse 36. Like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. They can't do that if they're slumbering. It will be good for those who, this is verse 37, it will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. That's readiness. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Jesus was ready. He doesn't expect us to do anything that he doesn't do. He expects us to be ready because he was ready. He was ready for the cross. Going a little farther, Matthew 26, 39. He fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it be possible, may this cup be, cup be, this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He reinforced his readiness to the Father in the garden. Jesus is ready. He's getting a place ready for you. John 14, verse 7 verses, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. Mansions, in, I think, at the King James. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do 
know him and have seen him. He and the Father were one. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to hear from God? Are you ready to listen to that still small voice? Are you ready to serve? Are you ready just to say something to somebody that might be hurting or just a stranger? Or stand up and let, let somebody sit down and talk to them about church like I did yesterday? I'm always looking for opportunities. Would you do that? Are you ready to learn? And are you ready to speak? You can make a difference if you are ready. Amen? Amen. It's 11.59. You got a, minute, a minute's worth of song? <laughs> just, just, pick, just pick a song. It doesn't mean if we go over a little bit. Okay. the first song on the song. 